You're listening to the Martin Houston Show on Tide 100.9 in Tuscaloosa. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Eddie Garcia. Week six in the NFL got underway with Thursday night football in Seattle and NFC West clash as the 49ers outscored the Seahawks 36 to 24. San Francisco quarterback Brock Purdy had 255 yards passing and three touchdowns, including a 76 yard strike to wide receiver Debo Samuel. He also had a pair of touchdown passes to tight end George Kittle. For Seattle, quarterback Geno Smith had 312 yards passing, one touchdown, but two interceptions. San Francisco's three and three with the win. Seattle drops the three and three with the loss. Postseason base. Baseball, two ALDS games. The Yankees eliminate the Royals with a 3-1 win in Kansas City. New York starter Garrett Cole went seven innings, allowed one run, six hits in the victory. Juan Soto and Giancarlo Stanton each drove in runs for New York as they take that series three games to one to advance to the American League Championship Series. The Guardians stay alive with a 5-4 win over the Tigers in Detroit. Cleveland's David Fry had a pinch hit two-run homer and later a squeeze bunt in the ninth inning that brought in what would be the game-winning run. That series is tied at 2-2. Alabama first and 10 on the 12. Again, Houston. He's got a hole. He's over. Alabama touchdown. I'm just wondering if your listeners <laughs> know how good a football player you were. Uh, I can still see you playing that full black, knocking those players out of the, out of the way. And I believe I could have run behind you. <laughs> Martin, I can remember when we came to summer and you were playing pool back up there. And I saw you in the weight room and watched you watch work out in the weight room. At least you pick up, you were strong enough to pick up the whole weight room. I wanted to pick it, and I run him back to the same thing. <laughs> biggest, biggest mistake we ever made. The Martin Houston Show with national championship winning fullback Martin Houston giving you one hour of intense, hard-hitting analysis from an insider's perspective. It's time for the Martin Houston Show on your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app.
again. Two pros and a cup of Joe. Fox Sports Radio, LeVar Arrington, Brady Quinn, Jonas Knox will be here. Coming up top of next hour, cause for concern, maybe for one quarterback in the NFL, we will discuss. A reminder before we get to another edition of In Case You Missed It, though, that shortly after the show, the podcast will be going up. So search Two Pros wherever you get your podcast. Be sure to also follow, rate, and review it. Again, just search Two Pros wherever you get your podcast. You'll see this show posted right after we get off the air. Sometimes you can't get to everything in the world of sports or entertainment. Good thing the guys are here to bring you in case you missed it. And for that, we turn it over to our executive producer, Lee Delap. Good Friday morning, everybody. Good morning, Jonas. Good morning, Brady. Good morning, LeVar. Guys, in case you missed this, uh, it was, hey, LeVar. Hey, guys, in case you missed this, uh, it was reported yesterday that CAA has officially parted hey, ways. Hey, Brady. CAA <laughs> has officially parted ways with Hassan Reddick amid his holdout with the Jets. Now, it is debatable about who has dropped who first, whether Reddick has fired his agents or they have parted ways with him due to their frustration with his holdout. <laughs> Who's debating? I don't know. That's just in this report that I see that it is debated because Aaron Rodgers had had put it out there that he had fired his uh, agents. Aaron uh, Rodgers did or his son Reddick? Aaron Rodgers had actually said this in a few uh, in some comments made a few weeks ago that uh, Reddick's former agents suggested the defensive standout had fired the agents. Yes. That didn't make sense. But yes, Rodgers had made had said Lee, that Reddick. Are you okay? You're having a moment? No, I'm reading what this is on this report. Rodgers called them Reddick's former agent, suggesting the defensive standout had fired the agents. Well, let me tell you something. If uh, if Hassan Reddick or his agent, whoever had the idea of not showing up to the Jets this year, they should get a raise because they were spot on with this. Like, uh, I give me my money. And if I'm, if I'm him, <laughs> send me elsewhere. You got November 5th? Like, send me to the Raiders. If you want Devontae Adams, package me in a deal. Yeah. and get the hell out of there. I just love how these negotiations go in New York. Apparently, it's just a friendly conversation with Woody Johnson to get the deal done. You know, just drive up, what was it, 95? <laughs> yeah, just, just show up. Just show up. We'll, we'll have somebody or... The Humana Honor Medicare Advantage Plan gives you $1,680 back each year in your Social Security check. Choose coverage that helps you keep more money in your pocket. Learn more at GetHumana.com. Humana, a more human way to health care. The Part B Give Back Benefit pays part or all of your Part B premium and the amount may change based on the amount you pay for Part B. Limitations and restrictions may apply. Humana is a Medicare Advantage HMO and PPO organization with a Medicare contract. Enrollment in any Humana plan depends on contract renewal. Stay up to date with the Crimson Tide, local high school sports, and Bama in the pros right here on Tide 100.9. Tide 100.9, Tuscaloosa weather. The sky clear this morning, the low at 53. Later today, a good supply of sunshine with a high at 80. And the weekend will stay dry, a sunny sky Saturday and Sunday with warm afternoons. The high Saturday, 82. The high Sunday, 85. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's 53 degrees in Tuscaloosa. WTBC Tuscaloosa and W265CG Tuscaloosa, a Town Square media station. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Eddie Garcia. Week six in the NFL got underway with Thursday Night Football in Seattle, an NFC West clash as the 49ers outscore the Seahawks 36-24. San Francisco quarterback Brock Purdy had 255 yards passing and three touchdowns, including a 76-yard strike to wide receiver Debo Samuel and a pair of touchdown passes to tight end George Kittle. Seattle quarterback Geno Smith had 312 yards passing with a touchdown but two interceptions. San Francisco improves to 3-3. Three and three. Seattle falls to 3-3 three and three with its third straight loss. Postseason base Baseball, two American League Division Series games. Yankees close out the Royals with a 3-1 win in Kansas City. New York starter Garrett Cole went seven innings, allowed one run on sixes in the win. Juan Soto and Giancarlo Stanton each drove in runs as New York wins that series three games to one to advance to the American League Championship Series. Guardians over the Tigers in Detroit 5-4. Cleveland's David Fry had a pinch hit two-run homer and a squeeze bunt that brought in what would be the game-winning run. That series is tied at 2-2. Alabama first and 10 on the 12. Again, Houston. He's got a hole. He's over. Alabama touchdown. Oh, how good a football player you were. I can still see you playing that fullback, knocking those players out of the, out of the way. And I believe I could have run behind you. Martin, I can remember when we came to summer and you were playing fullback up there. And I saw you in the weight room. 
and watch the weight room. At least the picture of you was strong enough to pick up the whole weight room. I wanted to fix it, and I run back to the same thing. Biggest mistake I ever made was trying to fix it. The Martin Houston Show with national championship winning fullback Martin Houston giving you one hour of intense hard hitting analysis from an insider's perspective it's time for the Martin Houston Show on your home for Alabama sports Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app Good morning. Welcome into this Friday edition of the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier, powered by Box Eye Care. We are uh, just a little bit over 24 hours away from Alabama getting it back on the right track against the South Carolina Gamecocks. We'll talk a little bit more about the game, keys to the game, players of the game, as well as we'll look at the injury report for Alabama this week where there's a surprise name that we're not 100% sure why he's out this week and probably out for the season from what it looks like. But we'll continue all this conversation and more. Remember, you can join us on the Empowerment Strategy Solution Highline on this Free For All Friday. It's a Free For All Friday powered by... The Pharmacy at Midtown. That's the Pharmacy at Midtown. Go check them out, thepharmacyatmidtown.com. TJ and his team do an awesome job, and they are there waiting, willing, and able uh, to serve you. So go check out the Pharmacy at Midtown, uh, located right next door to uh, a workout place. I won't mention them by name unless they want to be a sponsor. Uh, they have compounding meds with you in mind, free delivery. Let them come to you. They have other great resources, uh, including they can keep you, keep you up to date on immunizations. They offer long-term care. Uh, you can find great medical savings. And listen to this, medical synchronization. What's that? Pick up all of your medication on the same day each month. So uh, great services over at the pharmacy at it town. Once again, it's a free for all Friday, which means the phone lines are open uh, and you can get in on the conversation on the Empowerment Strategies and Solutions hotline. You can bring your thoughts, your comments, your questions to the table. Uh, you can get your score prediction uh, in. Uh, we, we got a few of them, but we need to get yours in today before time runs out. And the score prediction tiebreaker, having a little fun with that, is South Carolina's time of possession. Last week, we asked the question, would they, uh, could Alabama keep their scoring streak alive at 40-plus? No. Could Jalen Miro keep his touchdown uh, two and two and four going? Did he have four touchdowns? No, because uh, Jam got two. Uh, so uh, all the streaks were broken including Alabama's win streak. Can they start another streak? Can they start a streak once again of Jalen Miro scoring two and two, Jalen Miro scoring four, and Alabama winning and getting 40-plus points? We'll see all of that coming up. Remember that this is a day that the Lord has made, so let's rejoice, be glad in it. Take some time today to notice someone, love someone, serve someone. Be the difference you want to see in the world today. That's roll tight. All right. So as we kick it off, we got a big game tomorrow, as stated. Uh, definitely didn't think Alabama would be sitting at 4-1 and one going into this game, but got to the loss last week, but we've moved past that, and we're going to focus on the Gamecocks. What do you think Alabama has to do, or what do you think the key to <laughs> Alabama – <laughs> Alabama success yeah. has to be tomorrow. Pick back where they left off uh, with uh, about six minutes ago <laughs> in the second quarter of the Georgia game. Whatever they were doing in that game, they need to do again. I here, here here's here's Martin's assessment. It's the easy answer is get off the field on third down, or get off the field on transition down. Against Georgia, they played lights out on third down. Uh, and three for 15, they literally reversed that 
uh, and went 12 for 18 against Vanderbilt. So they have to get off the field uh, on transition downs. They were seven. Georgia was seven, seven on fourth down. Vanderbilt was one for one, which is probably as scary a thought as anything. The last eight fourth downs, the team has got it when they're going for it. Um, so that, that's number one. But I think it's between the ears, X. I think the key for Alabama this week is between the ears. Um, and, and what do I mean by that? I don't think Alabama necessarily didn't prepare hard. I don't think Alabama didn't necessarily want to win that game. I think Alabama fell victim to what I think several teams have fallen victim to in that we're playing Vanderbilt. And they looked at the logo, and they did not look at the film. Uh, Virginia Tech didn't see the film. But if you watch the Virginia Tech game and the Missouri game, you should have known you were going to be in for a game where you had to really perform. And I don't think they did that. I think that's why you saw the looks on the sideline, the shocks on their face, and the reactions at the end of the game. Um, with that said, I think it all starts between their ears and – they, they, they will. This team will not underestimate another opponent. The reality of it is, if someone had told you after playing Georgia, Alabama would be five and one, ranked in the top seven, and all of their, I mean, after playing Vanderbilt, we'd be five and one, uh, and Alabama would be ranked in the top seven. Everybody would have taken it. So the question becomes this, X, and I'll ask you this, and then let you go. Do you think? this team benefits more from having won a Georgia game and lost a Vanderbilt or is hurt more by having lost a Vanderbilt game versus won a Georgia game as you look forward into the season? Which one do you think ultimately ends up benefiting them more? Ah, uh, man, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> Excuse me. That's a good question, and I would believe beating Georgia and losing to Vandy because you know you can go to the mountaintop yep. and handle the handle business. Point blank period. You can be at the you can go against the best of the best and dominate them. You know, even though we look at the second half and what it was, Bama dominated Georgia for 30 minutes. And that takes a absolute will to win and execution to pull off. And Alabama's I done think it. Our dominance hurt us in a game and a half. I'm, I'm, I'm really believing that we were so dumb against Georgia. To me, everything flipped in that game, and I think was a continuation after we ran the trick play. Keep your foot on the pedal. Keep a – what – what? I don't even – I have – I've not seen the, the show that Ryan Williams was was talking about on his iPad, I mean uh, – um, I black that everybody went crazy about. I think they say it's about from some show. It says kill everybody, uh, and it's mm -hmm. it, it's talking about that killer instinct. Um, having that as a player, uh, I think we had that X, and I think that trick play from that point on we lost it. We have to find that back. Agree that that is definitely the mentality that you have to have. And, and we haven't had that for the last six quarters. Um, on, on, you can, you can say the offense has been fine to a certain degree, but there, there's still a level of execution that the offense has to have. And that's the difference in continuing to blow Georgia out as well as winning the, the game against Vanderbilt that we weren't able to do. But Let me just real quick. That. Let me ask you this. Okay. Why did our execution fall on? Why did the execution falter against Georgia? Do you think it was all Georgia? No. It, it, I would say it is 60% the things Georgia did in the second half of that game and 40% of Alabama being complacent. And I would, I would say it's probably 80 to 90% Alabama. I, 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 everybody talking about what Georgia did. We did not, we, we did not run our offense. That's why I've been trying to warn all the people talking about the offense need to help the defense. You, you have a team that goes through its quarterback. 
It flows through his quarterback. And when you decide not to do that, it doesn't matter what you do from there. We didn't run RPOs. We just ran the ball to the outside. We didn't run quarterback draws. We didn't run read option. We didn't run RPOs. We didn't do any of that in the second half. And then we come down to a situation. We have to have him. We said, hey, dog, get out and go get you, go eat. And what did he do? He yeah. hits the guy deep. We threw the ball how many times in the second half? Deep. Uh, well, Twice. And what happened on those plays? 50-yarder that set up a field goal, 75-yard touchdown to win it. So the two times we ran our offense through our quarterback, we scored. Yep. And everybody that called up last week saying, I want to see the run game more. Baby, the run game goes through your quarterback. We have a guy who has the chance to be just like the dude from LSU with more talent around him. That's not – pigeonhole him because we want to see what we used to see in Alabama. I promise you, the running backs are going to get to eat as this season goes along, but don't force it. If the other defenses are too stupid to take Jalen away, keep feeding the beast. That's why Alabama lost this game and the other game. We came out in this game with the same mindset that we played the second half against Georgia. Yeah, I mean, let, let's be real. Now, our it's defense almost, never, it's almost it's almost huh? like they, that the coaches listen to the fans. <laughs> yeah, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it, that that's how I felt watching. I was like, did he listen to what everybody was saying? <laughs> yeah. So, anyway, that's my thoughts on it, man. Alabama just needs to be Alabama on both sides, and Wayne. Uh, Kane Womack has to break his tendency at he has to break his tendency of blitzing. He has to blitz more. He cannot sit back and wait because teams have figured out how to make if, – if, if we're waiting and they make us wait, we're going to get beat. Let's get the break right. here. We'll be back, back on the other side. You listen to the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier powered by Box Eye Care on a free-for-all Friday that's powered by the pharmacy – at Midtown, get your uh, Martin Houston Show officially licensed Alabama legacy gear uh, today. And, hey, right now that's who's sponsoring the score prediction contest. So don't forget to get your scores in. And it is a tiebreaker week of time of possession for South Carolina. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. A very good morning to you and TGIF. We are getting off to a nice and light Friday start. As you travel inside the construction zone, you don't even have to worry about slow goes there. 2059 eastbound between Joe Malisham and McFarland, you're A-OK. -okay. And McFarland looking good in both the east and westbound lanes between Jack Warner and Lurleen Wallace. With your Tuscaloosa traffic now, I'm Tammy Thomas. This reporting. The Humana Honor Medicare Advantage Plan gives you $1,680 back each year in your Social Security check. Choose coverage that helps you keep more money in your pocket. Learn more at GetHumana.com. Humana, a more human way to health care. The Part B Give Back Benefit pays part or all of your Part B premium and the amount may change based on the amount you pay for Part B. Limitations and restrictions may apply. Humana is a Medicare Advantage HMO and PPO organization with a Medicare contract. Enrollment in any Humana plan depends on contract renewal. You. Your new favorite Tuscaloosa hangout, food, music, and more. Come and taste what's new at the venue, whether it's Liza's Sweet Shop, whether it's the all-day breakfast and burgers from Ramajamas, or the quality food that you can get at Finnish Pub. Great atmosphere, great time, great people, great environment. That's the venue. You can find them online at TheVenueTuscaloosa.com, located off of Watermelon Road, just past Sokol Park. That's the venue, Tuscaloosa's new favorite hangout. Make it yours. Hey. Um, hey, I'm Martin Houston, and I want to tell you about exciting news happening at Box Eye Care. They've moved to their new location, bringing you a brand new lab, stylish new frames, and a fresh look just for you. Enjoy their expanded frame inventory, competitive prices, and faster service, all with the same great level of service you've come to know and trust. Discover this full-service eye care at Box Eye Care's new location. With their in-house lab, 
They offer unbeatable value in one of the largest frame collections in town. Schedule your eye exam today and walk out with new glasses in less than an hour in most cases. Visit BoxEyeCare.com. That's BoxEyeCare.com or call 205-342-0660. That's 205-342-0660. Visit them at 5003 Oscar Baxter Drive. That's Box Eye Care. Your vision, our priority. The sound of Bama Sports. Your show. Your team. The Martin Houston Show. On your home for Alabama sports. Tide 100.9 and streaming on the Tide 100.9 app. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier. We're powered by Box I Care. It's a free for all Friday. Hey, don't forget if you're in the market to sell your home and or buy your home. I'd love the opportunity to work with you through uh, Martin Houston Real Estate, partner with Realty One Group. We love the opportunity to help you get that house listed and sold. And if you act now, you can save 1% uh, on commission, and I will get you taken care of. Email Estate at gmail.com. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show as we kick off the second quarter. Uh, want to talk about some tendencies that I noticed, but before that, let's get to the callers on the Empowerment Strategy Solution Hotline. Chuck, how you doing this morning? Yes, good morning to you all going into the weekend. I just wanted to, uh, I don't want to take you off topic. I know it's a free fall uh, Friday. And um, yeah, just uh, help the blood pressure uh, going and playing South Carolina. Yeah, I, I was just Taking back on what you were talking about uh, yesterday about the uh, what we heard about the coaching wardrobe. Uh, well, it's about the X's and the O's, and and yes, yes uh, we want to see. Uh, and like I said, I, I did a collage yesterday on Facebook, and and the various coaches of the uh, the clothes that they wear. And one guy named uh, you all look him up, uh, Alvin Wyatt, the W Y A T T. He's coach at Bethune Cookman uh, University in Daytona Beach, Florida. You talking about one of the guys who love to dress to the nine. W. Yeah, just look him up. I call him Shine. He played with Larry Little at Bethune Cookman. My Miami Dolphins, great. But uh, I look at him and look at Coach DeBoer, and I said, well, it's just it's about what uh, what what makes you uh, feel great. And uh, and, and we're, we're looking at uh, what you what you all just talked about, uh, looking at uh, the strategies and and uh, and winning the ball game. And and uh, it just uh, you know these things. You know these are people who don't have anything to do with their time. Probably people don't even probably don't know who, Watch football and don't even not pay attention. You know, like you you just breaking down what what happened in the Vanderbilt game. This is what uh what Coach DeBoer and his staff are, are doing, and 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 be worrying about fashion. And like I said, I look at Biff Poggy uh, at uh, University of Charlotte. He looks like he's going to work in his yard with his uh, muscle shirt and, sh- and uh, shorts on. And he's thinking about Bill Belichick and uh, and many others. Uh, and the, the, the list is just going on. You think about Coach Saban. You know, Coach Saban uh, had his suit on at at, at uh, pregame, but he. You know what he's going to have on his polo shirt or with, uh, one of the, the jackets, uh, windbreakers. And, but uh, I don't, I don't want to go far into that. But uh, hey, you know what? I'm, I'm going to end it on this one. Uh, whenever you, your homecoming comes, they, they say if they care so much about his attire, uh, uh, get him a suit and a, and a, uh, put on a house tooth hat uh, uh, honoring uh, Coach Bear Bryant. I'm going to land on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the whole. The whole wardrobe thing, Chuck. I pre- we appreciate your call. Thank you. Um, All right. It, it is something that is so stupid to me. Uh, at the end of the day, because I don't. It, it. I'm not gonna say I don't care exactly what he wears, but if he's comfortable <laughs> in it, <laughs> uh, it, it, it's pointless to me because it's like you said, it's about X's and O's and winning the games. All right, thanks, Chuck. Yeah, X, X, that's so true. It's a, it's an interesting uh, concept there, but uh, you just think, you know, uh, how how you feel comfortable working, you know, how do you feel comfortable doing your job? And I've had this has had to grow on me. Like I said, man, I every time I see the guy from um, Miami, I go, that's why they can't win. Miami Daniels. 
Yeah, I mean, literally, I say that's why they can't win. I mean, you know, I said that dude don't look like he. It look like he getting ready to go to some uh some uh, uh some little teenage um party or something. Uh, but <laughs> I mean, I, I I can't help that that's what I think. But you know, does does he coach better in that situation? Maybe if he does, he if he coaches worse, if he's not dressed like that, he better quit. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm okay with my my coach is not gonna look like what we've seen in the past. Uh, but if he yeah. gets if he if he gets back on the winning track, which I think he will, I'm gonna be okay at. Yeah, I think it it is something to see, but it is it's the change with the times. But uh we got Pat joining us on the hotline. How are you doing this morning, Pat? Is Pat, Pat you with us? Pat, I am. Pat you say right there. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear hey. you. Hello. We got you. Hello. 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 Okay, keys to victory. They, uh, the, with these two edge rushers they've got, they got fairly prolific edge rushers. Do y'all think we need to put a back in the backfield to uh, assist uh, this lack of talent on the offensive line? What, what, <laughs> hey, hey, did you see? Did you see? This is crazy now. I, I, I meant to save it and post it, but I didn't. Um, they rated the top five pass blocking um, left tackles. tackles, and Caitlin Proctor, uh, Kate and Proctor was the highest. Okay, now, let that sink in from last year. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, he, he has improved now on that side, but uh, yeah. just uh, Jalen got killed, and these, hey, these guys do have. Two fairly, you know, decent edge rushers. Uh, Pat, when was the last time, uh, X, you may know this, when was the last time uh, before that sack Jalen had gotten hit? Uh, him? Wisconsin? I don't think Georgia sacked yeah. him. No, he didn't get sacked against not, not, Georgia, Wisconsin. Not, I mean, that was, nothing like that hit. Well, that was, it, 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 Pat, it wasn't even a big hit. That guy came in, and when he came in, if if you've seen it slowed down, he swatted at the ball and then hit and then tackled Jalen. But he, that, here's, that was great awareness. Pat, and here's here's the other part. Now I'm not I'm not I'm not trying to make Pritchett look bad, but go back and watch that play, Pat. If Pritchett immediately tries to recover instead of laying on the ground after he whiffed, they probably would have recovered the fumble. Yes. Coach Cap said it himself. The offensive line coach said it this week. He said, Hey, guys get beat. I can I can accept that. He said the effort afterwards, if he didn't lay there feeling sorry for himself. He might have been in position to recover the ball. Because that's always what – you see that happen all the time. But when, a, when there's a sack fumble, the guy who usually recovers it is the guy who got beat. I mean, that's that's percent of the time. Thanks, Pat. You got anything else for us? Have we got a score from Pat hey, this week? Yeah. Hey, hey do you two – I got 48 to 10, Martin. What's the time? Man, of uh, and time of, for South time of possession for uh, South Carolina. Uh, I'm going to say about 22 minutes because we're actually going to control the ball in this game and run run the ball. We're going to run the ball, and we're going to do the same thing we've been doing when we run the ball. We're going to break 30-yard runs and 40-yard runs and 50-yard runs. This well, team is not going to do that. This team is not going to do that. You know why I'm arguing with you? Yeah. You know why I'm arguing with you? Every time I argue with you something, Pat, when you say something that I think is ridiculous, it always comes true, right? So every <laughs> I argue with you about Ryan, hey. Ryan Williams and, and that's come true. I argue with you about well, uh, hey. other things. So I'm arguing with you, Pat, about us having ball control and saying you're wrong. 
but I'm going to be okay if you call me up on Monday and say, I told you, Mark, or, or like you normally do, text me in the middle of the game and, and, hey. and make fun of me for being wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah hey, look, hey, Ryan Williams, 205 yards this week. Ryan oh. goes back on track for my 1,359-yard prediction. See, 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 X, that's what makes me argue with him. He just said we're going to control the ball, and then he says Ryan's going to have 205 yards. That means that we're going to have probably a yep. lot of short, quick scoring drive. But he'll probably still end up being right. Crazy. <laughs> 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 Thanks, Pat. Appreciate you, man. <laughs> X, I, I don't man. even know what you do with Pat, man. <laughs> Uh, every time I argue with him about so he say, he say some of Pat says some of the craziest stuff. And you're like, okay, Pat, all right, like like Ryan Williams. Everybody thought Ryan Williams was going to be good, right? I mean, right, everybody. <laughs> but but who thought that this guy? I'm telling you, had you 500 think, some yards already. Let me let me ask you this, X, and I know this is this is a free for all fry, so we go wherever it goes. If they wasn't saying, oh, he's 17, he's a freshman. And, and somebody that knew nothing about football just watched film of the top players in college football. Who's leading the Heisman race? Who is the most uh, exciting, explosive player in college football? I mean, it, it, it has to be Ryan. Uh, I don't know. Ashton Genty still might have it, he, but he'd be top three. Who? Top two. Genty. From what is he doing that Ryan isn't? Averaging 10 yards a carry as a running back. Okay. Is 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 that as crazy as what's what's Ryan Williams um touchdown? And breaking 10 tackles huh? every and breaking 10 tackles every time he scores. And, and who is he no, done that they, against? They, they, they're, they're top two in my opinion. Top two. Who, 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 who has he done that against? The teams that's on the schedule, right? But but what's that level of competition? Who's on this it's schedule? Group of, it, it's group, group of five. five but, Put Ryan but he Williams. Had 100, he had 190 against Oregon, so he he can do it against the big boys. Against Oregon, Oregon ain't no defensive team. Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, hey, listen, hey, hey. before wait, 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 before we get the break, I'm telling. You, Pat is such is such a great caller that now Tamara will go. She asked me last week, she goes, Who's this Pat guy that calls in? She's like, he's hilarious. <laughs> so Pat, you, you you made a fan out of my wife. <laughs> I, I, oh, every, I get asked all the time, who is this Pat guy? Because that's that's why I have to let people who don't know Pat and I's relationship, but they may think, dang, Martin is so mean to Pat. I'm, 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 I always have to go because Pat will just throw stuff out there on you, man. But the crazy part is he's right a lot of the time. So, uh, but that's what that's what I love about this show. It's the Martin Houston show with Martin and Xavier. We're powered by Box Eye Care. But we say it's the Sound of Bama Sports. It's your show, your team. We don't let just anybody talk. But we do have some other fans that join join us. But mostly, it's all about Alabama, and we will give you the floor. If you go off from, off the rails and say something crazy and stupid, I'm gonna shut you off and disconnect you and all of that. But for the most part, we have a good time here. So we'll be back on the other side to keep it rolling. Tide 100.9 traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. A very good morning to you and TGIF. We are getting off to a nice and light Friday start. As you travel inside the construction zone, you don't even have to worry about slow goes there. 2059 eastbound between Joe Malisham and McFarland, you're A-OK. -okay. And McFarland looking good in both the east and westbound lanes between Jack Warner and Lurleen Wallace. With your Tuscaloosa traffic now, I'm Tammy Thomas. Every Hydrostein, that's Houston Hydrostein. Quality work you can stand on. Whether you're looking for carpet and upholstery cleaning, oriental rug cleaning, residential or commercial water damage, and a whole lot more, you need to call Houston Hydrostein at 205-553-9460, 553-9460, or visit them online at HoustonHydrostein.com. And once again, Houston Hydrostein, 
team is quality work you can stand on. Dixie Battery Supply takes care of all of your battery needs. Find the commercial batteries you're after and never feel powerless again. Come check out our Northport and Tuscaloosa locations or call us at 205-758-9190. And once again, power up all your devices by using Dixie Battery Supply, DixieBatterySupply.com. They offer reconditioned batteries starting at $39.99 and you'll find all the batteries you need. And don't forget to ask us about our golf carts. That's DixieBatterySupply.com. Visit the pharmacy at Midtown. That's the pharmacy at Midtown.com. TJ and his team are looking for the opportunity to provide you with great services, including compound, home delivery, and a whole lot more. If you're looking for a great pharmacy that'll take care of all of your needs, including wellness classes, including health, and more, that's the pharmacy at Midtown. Call them at 205-579-9933. If you're looking for a great pharmacy, you need to try the pharmacy at Midtown. That's the pharmacy at Midtown, pharmacy at Midtown.com. Got Timberland in West Alabama or East Mississippi? North River Timber Company has you covered. Since 2011, Courtney White, a registered forester, along with his expert team, have been managing timberland and harvesting timber across four West Alabama counties. They offer comprehensive timber management plans, reforestation services, and appraisals. Courtney White says timber is like money in the bank. Don't let your investment go unrealized. Call North River Timber Company today. Email them at NorthRiverTimberCO at gmail.com or call 205-242-5127. Interact with the Martin Houston Show by calling us at 205-342-9904 or tuning into the Martin Houston Show on Facebook. Welcome back in. Oh man, uh, X. I wasn't finished. I wasn't finished arguing with you about this Aston Genty. Just FYI. But real quick, hey, listen. If you're looking for a great leadership event, Live to Lead uh, Empowerment Strategies and Solutions, my new organization is bringing this to Tuscaloosa. It features John Maxwell, number one leadership expert, best-selling author. John Gordon, best-selling author and keynote speaker of. Uh, the Energy Bus, Row Your Boat, Row My Boat, uh, Malcolm Gladwell, author of The Tipping Point, uh, Shante Lowe, uh, four-time Olympian, and Michael Jr., comedic thought leader, and more, uh, featuring myself and a couple other local uh, John Maxwell team members. It's going to be 12-3, December 3rd, Bryant Conference Center. Tickets are inexpensive. You can get a table of eight. Help me fill those tables uh, for only $400 or individual tickets for $70. So if you have a group of friends, uh, you just register for the table and then uh, you can give the tickets that way. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be an organization. It's just the table itself filled uh, for $400. So go to martinhouston.org, click the Live to Lead tab, follow the instructions to register. Hey, I ain't finished with you, man. I know we I know we play South Carolina tomorrow, but but X... Gentry, I had to go look him up, man. I know he he's good. He he nasty. He's nasty. He has <laughs> ten point nine. Hey, that's what I did in high school. I get it. That's respect. Much much respect. Uh, I averaged just under that. I was about ten and a half my senior year per carry. He has ninety five carries, a thousand and thirty one yards. That's impressive, X. Mm-hmm. He touches the ball. He's touched the ball 95 times. So there's a lot of opportunities where he he breaks. Yeah. He, he he doesn't get that that consistency. What's his name? Has 19 carries, Xavier. 544 yards. Now, now. I mean, I mean, let that sink in for a second. I'm Every not. I'm, I'm, not not I'm, just, I'm not denying what Ryan has. I'm not denying what Ryan has done. But but you but let's also remember Ashton Genty gets the ball negative yards in the backfield. Ryan yep. is absolutely a stud, but he also on average is catching the ball 20 something yards downfield. And what, what's his touchdown? He's not further. No, most of the time he's not. He's catching the ball, and then he's wait, 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 wait. If if he if he's got if his average touchdown 
is almost 60 yards. He's he's touching the ball 30, 25 to 30 yards down the field. And he then taking it 25 to 30. And Genty's getting it okay. negative yard. Okay, here's here's the thing, X. Here's here's the question I have for you, because you you're wrong. I'm gonna just tell you Ryan Williams would be winning, oh, he'd be leading the Heisman if he was if he wasn't 17. I, I I'm just, I'm telling you, I'm just telling you, he would. Listen, Xavier. He might. He had he had Ryan Williams has two touchdowns where I think he was just wide open, but he did the guy when he got wide open. It wasn't, you know what I mean? Like, like you go back and watch, he made the move. Like, like when you talk to him, it says he, he shifted in and, and, and he found in that slot and then he took it to the house. Go back and look at the rest of his touchdowns. They should have been tackles. Like, like, like he should have been tackled on his second touchdown of his career. He should have been tackled against Georgia. He should have been tackled against uh, uh, Vanderbilt. My point is this. Have, have you heard anybody talk to you about uh, break down his touchdown against Georgia? What he did that made that play, not, not after the catch. They were breaking it down on ESPN. They said that, uh, they said that, not only did he make a great catch, he kept himself from going to the sideline on his release. And they showed how often receivers mm -hmm. would drift to the sideline. It's the, it's, it's, it's the placement. It's all the stuff he does between the, the ball being thrown, his route running, what he does afterwards, his body control. All of that makes him the most electric player in college football. Not just his stats. Because there's, I don't think, I think there's other running backs who could go to uh, Boise and, 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 and run behind that team and do what Jen, not maybe at that exact, I don't see another receiver that can do what he does. I, I, Xavier, you, Xavier, Xavier I'm 54 make years that. old. I'm 54 years old. And I can mm -hmm. tell you there was one guy who had body control like Ryan Williams in my lifetime. And that was Lynn Swan. And he took ballet. Most people don't know that. He took ballet. But can you say that the numbers that we're seeing him put up at this clip, there's only been one running back in college football history that in your lifetime that has done this? At this clip? Oh. Talking about Barry Sanders? And that's Barry. And that's Barry. Hey, they, but I just have to see. I, 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 it, 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 I think you got. I think you got to watch. Have you watched Genty? No, but I, like I said, it's, it's, he's playing against Group of Five, man. It's gonna be hard. I know to he's playing in Group of Five. It's gonna be hard to convince me, I man. Know he, but but then here's the thing. He's even got the crazy. Like, I know that he's even got the craziest stance I've ever seen from a running back. He hey, stands so, in the backfield. Looking like he <laughs> is Michael Myers standing around the corner. He doesn't hand on hit. He stands straight up, hands down by his side. It is the craziest looking thing ever. And then he's doing all this damage. Yeah, I, I'm, 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 I'm going to harass you. I mean, I, I know listen, you are. I had crimson colored glasses. On. I have crimson, crimson colored glasses. Of course, last week I had to, uh, I don't know if you saw my post, I took some crimson colored glasses that had a cracked lens on them and said <laughs> 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 at halftime at halftime I said I said uh I said we were gonna come back shut them out stop them and uh and somebody said something and I po posted some crimson colored glasses with the crack crack hitting one of the lens so that's what I'm doing here too man <laughs> yeah. It's, um, <laughs> it's it's interesting though because I was talking to Wyatt about it yesterday and I was like, who is this Genty kid? I keep seeing him on ESPN. He keeps popping up on my phone. Like, who is this person? And I know he's at Boise State, Martin. I know it, it's they're not really a good program. You know, they're playing these whack teams compared to like Alabama. But I'm telling you, like, watch. I think they play Hawaii tomorrow. If I'm not mistaken. Watch. Like, he's really good. Trust I, me. I, I know. Watch I'm him. Hey, listen, listen, LT was, Barry Sanders played in, in the Big 12. 
that was that was a group of five colleges. Uh, so <laughs> <I'm just, laughs> uh, Ladanian Tomlinson, LT, uh, was from um, TCU. You, before, and they weren't in the Big Twelve. Uh, Marshall Falk was from San Diego State. I'm just being some of the best running backs out there uh, at the next level. Most of them come from places like that. I'm Walter just being, Payton. Yeah, uh, I, I'm just having Walter fun. With HBC. <laughs> right, but 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 seriously, Ryan Williams, uh, he, he would be if if they didn't condition him in his age. The dude is Unreal. I've seen I've seen running backs do this. Okay. I, I and I'm not trying to be funny. Guys, somebody tell me a college um wide receiver that you've seen do what Ryan Williams does. Like ever? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's hard. I I I, 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 I challenge. I tell you, I tell you I'm not this. talking about that have had stats. I'm talking about, to your point, uh, Chase, you were telling me, go back and watch Gent Genty. I was just messing. I, Genty would be, you know, probably my vote if I was being non-biased, right? Yeah. Because of what he's doing. And I, so I was just I was just <laughs> messing with Xavier after <laughs> he said Genty. He was supposed to agree with me, Wyatt. I mean, uh, Chase, but he didn't. <laughs> 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 so after he did, and I had to argue with him, but, 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 but I've not seen a guy think about his, his, his big plays. Okay. He, he should have caught the ball against Georgia clean. That should have been a clean catch, but it wasn't what he was able to do after that. Think about this. He tips it. He gathers it. Then go back and look. He, that was by the time he gathers that ball, there's like three or four Georgia guys around him. He makes the first two or three miss him. He caught a ball against Georgia. To me, this is one of the sweetest plays he did all year. It just wasn't a touchdown. He catches the ball with his back, his second, first or se second catch of the game, I think it was. His back mm -hmm. is to the guy. He makes a move that freezes. The DB, so he could turn around and face him. Once he turned around and faced him, he made a move, and the guy didn't even touch him. The normal wide receiver would have been drilled in the back. He did it, but this guy didn't even, and this guy was an All-American. I'm, I'm not talking about him doing this against some guy that's trying to figure out how to play. This guy is gonna, you know, came back could have been a, could have been drafted last year. I, I just I, I've not seen it. Randy Moss did people like this, but he didn't do it with this this type of way. Randy Moss was a tall, lanky, unbelievably skilled receiver. The but reason he is called Moss, huh? Getting Moss. Is the yeah, reason that the term is called getting Moss? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, anyway. I mean, it's <laughs> but I mean, I I think Ryan Williams is unreal, and I think uh, I think I think it was Jed that asked when when it's all said and done, will he be the best wide receiver to come out of Alabama? Yes, if he stays <laughs> healthy, if he stays healthy, he will be the best. He Agreed. might. It, it depends on if he'll get every record as far as like the number of catches and things of that nature, because he's so explosive, he might not just touch the ball enough because he takes it so many times, but I think he will flirt with the receiving record yard record and uh, the touchdown record for sure. And depending on who his quarterback is over his last two years, he'll flirt with uh, the recession record as well. Yeah. I, I think the guy is elite. Uh, is an understatement. So, but <laughs> we'll, we'll be back on the other side to put the finishing touches on this edition of the Barton Houston Show. It has truly been a free for all Friday powered by <laughs> by the pharmacy at Midtown. Roll Tide. We'll be back in just a moment. 
Go inside the Alabama Crimson Tide with the Gary Harris Show. Friday morning at 9 a.m. It's the TGIF edition of the Gary Harris Show coming to you live from Innisfree Irish Pub on University Boulevard as part of our Fridays at the Free. We're going to have guests. We're going to have our Bama football trivia giveaway, SEC point spread predictions, and a whole lot more. It's always fun on Fridays at the Free. The Gary Harris Show, Friday morning at 9 a.m. Catch the Gary Harris Show Monday through Friday, 9 to 11 a.m. on Tide 100.9 and Tide100.9.com. Tide 100.9 Traffic. Tuscaloosa traffic now from the Townsend Nissan Traffic Center. We've got a little bit of a delay now on Joe Malisham and the northbound direction right around Johnson Road. You want to watch out for that extremely heavy slow go, possible accident in the area. Otherwise, looking good on the rest of the freeways and side streets. We're not experiencing the heavy delays right now on Lurleen Wallace at the McFarland intersection. With your Tuscaloosa traffic now, I'm Tammy Thomas. This report is I 100.9 Tuscaloosa weather. Our long dry spell continues today. The sky's sunny. The high for this afternoon around 80. Clear and cool tonight. The low 52. Or tomorrow and Sunday, lots of sunshine both days with warm afternoons. The high tomorrow 82. The high Sunday 85. I'm James Spann on the ABC 3340 Weather Center on Tide 100.9. It's 53 degrees in Tuscaloosa. Into Tide 100.9 for more of the Martin Houston Show with Martin Houston and X's and O's Sports Xavier Houston. Welcome back into the Martin Houston Show with Martin and Xavier. Hey, support your favorite athlete. Yes, that's I'm asking you to support me. That's number three five. Get your officially licensed gear legacy gear, and a whole lot more, go to athletesthread.com forward slash collections forward slash Martin dash Houston. I appreciate the support. And if you happen to be tuned in on a live stream or you're on your radio, uh, radio airwaves, uh, just go to my Facebook channel, uh, <clears throat> the Martin Houston show on Facebook, and you can click the QR code located in the left corner and uh, it'll take you right to it as well. Thanks for the support and roll tide X. Hey, as we get ready to wrap this show up, we do have a call from Michael here in Tuscaloosa. How are you doing this morning, Michael? Hey guys, hope y'all are enjoying this uh, cool weather as much as I am. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I, I was just, I was just going to throw out one thing. Y'all were talking about Ryan a little while ago and, uh, Hey, Michael before, that, Michael, before you do that, tell Xavier he's wrong. I need some. Support. You're wrong. You're, you're, you're wrong, Xavier. If it's your dad, you're wrong. Just remember that. I'm I'm 54. <laughs> my dad is 77, and I'm still wrong. So you, you just you got a lifetime of being wrong in front of you, son. <laughs> wow. What you got, Michael? <laughs> I'm sorry I had to put it that way, but that's just the way it is. <laughs> What you got, man? Yeah, I was just going to say the uh, of all the moves that that Ryan Williams has made since y'all were talking about him this morning, that the most impressive move that I have seen him make was the move that he made after the catch against Georgia, that was the game winning touchdown, when he stabbed his foot in the ground and the two defenders from Georgia kissed each other. <laughs> as he went on, because I'm okay, that that that's one of those things that it's it's a move you can practice catching all day long. You can chip drills, you can one hand catch, you can do all that stuff. But that's a move that just clicks in your head, and it, it's not something you necessarily. I, I don't think it is. I mean, that you necessarily practice all the time for it to work out the way that it did. So he, he made throw that two, out. he made two three sixties on that one play. Just let that sink in. Yep. But uh, anyway, it, 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 I just wanted to throw that one in there. And uh, I, I know people, I saw something funny the other day, said in case anybody hadn't realized, Ryan Williams is only 17 years old. But I, I, I always think about it. You know, they were saying that facetiously, but I always think about it in the fact of as, as good as he is, he actually should be playing football on Friday night, not on Saturdays. 
That's that's right. the perspective I think of it. He should still be playing football on Friday nights, not on Saturdays, and especially not on Saturdays at a program like Alabama. So it's just he's 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 a special talent. Yep, and that's scary Without thing. Do you have a score, Michael? Your first time caller. Thank him. Do you have a score? Yeah. A score? Yeah. We do a score prediction. I, I, mean, I, I don't get into that. Uh, as long as Alabama wins by one, I'm good, guys. <laughs> I, I, I think right. I, I wrote in one time and told y'all they should win by 50 every game they ever play in every sport, but they should beat Auburn by 100. So yeah, I remember uh, that, Michael. <laughs> hey, man. Roll Tide, X. <laughs> Roll Tide. Uh, so, okay, so we got a couple minutes. Keys to victory. Uh, well, I told you my keys to victory uh, was that the, the defense just, you know, uh, plays well on third and fourth down, transition down X, and then they ultimately get um, get off the field. And it's between their ears. If they're if they're mentally right, Alabama's going to be fine tomorrow and the rest of the year. Yeah, uh, players of the game. Uh, I'm going to say uh, it's going to be uh, uh, Dalen Milrose. Gonna, they're going to come out and feed the beast again. All right, I agree with that. I think it's going to be Miro and this offensive line because, as Pat brought up, they have two really good pass rushers. On, on this team, score prediction. You, you go first, man. I ain't got one yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go 41 to 17, and I think South Carolina has the ball 19 minutes. Yeah, and I'm going to jump back on my bandwagon. Uh, I think they're going to get in the 50, but I'm going to be conservative and go 48. Uh, to 17, the defense gets it right again, and that drops uh, uh, South Carolina back down. We clearly have more possessions, but uh, we won't have as much time of possession, and I'm going to give them 26 minutes. All right. All right. You got anything else before I let you go, man? Really That's quick. it. And what was your time of possession? All right. Hey, let's get ready to get out of here. Thanks. Remember this. Trust in the Lord always. Lean not your own understanding. All your ways acknowledge him, and he will direct your past. That's Xavier Houston. I'm Martin Houston. That's Chase Brumfield. This is the Martin Houston Show powered by Box I Care. It's been a free-for-all Friday brought to you by the Pharmacy at Midtown, pharmacymidtown.com. Roll Tide, and we'll catch you on Monday to talk about Alabama's big win over the Gamecocks. Roll Tide, everybody. <laughs>